All right, today we'll be talking about Mail Envelope. Mail Envelope is an amazing tool for both Chrome and Firefox for using PGP. You can use this uh, for webmail, you can use this on a forum. There's pretty much unlimited uses. I know it's portrayed for webmail, but I've seen it used on a lot of different ways creatively for inline PGP uh, in various places. So the possibilities are limitless. So any pretty much any place where you would post a message and you would want to encrypt with PGP, you could do that uh, for private messaging. Uh, it's pretty sweet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through installing it, setting up a key. And for right now, you should do is go to mailenvelope.com. You go down. If you're on Firefox, you click the Firefox. Since we're in Chrome for this demonstration, I'm going to click on this. Click add the extension. Then give it a second and it should install. So now there's the mail envelope extension over here that you should see. The first thing you want to do is go configure it. It's pretty intuitive. Um, so you're going to do is generate a key. So in this case, uh, depending on what your use case is, you could use your full name. If you're doing something that you're trying to be pseudonymous, uh, you could put in your username or alias there. In this case, I'm just going to use for the Gmail that I set up for tutorials. All right, so then we'll just put in there um, right and there's no reason that you have to match the email that you're using with the email that you're using so you could create um, your key with the email address that doesn't match the email you're going to use it with or just put in something completely fictitious um, it does help to have it match if you are using it for something where you want people to be able to find your key as like a business because you can upload your public key into a directory and mail envelope has a thing for that so people can find your key easily if you haven't published it and then there's different options here i always would choose this that should be the default you should be using 4096 bits or higher um, some people really are about expiring the keys in this case we're not going to do that but if you wanted to you can set hey i want this key to be good for two years and then i'll generate a new one or uh, in this case we're just going to create a really basic password because I won't be using this ever again after this. But uh, there is an option to upload. I'm going to remove that because I know I'm not going to be using this key. Uh, in this case, what you're going to want to do is obviously use a password you don't use anywhere else. So you would want to set up uh, a good password. And if you have any kind of two-factor authentication, like a YubiKey with like a static um, slot 2 program, which I highly recommend, what you can do is type in your short, probably 10 to 12 character random password and then emit the slot 2, which would basically put the slot 2 password after the part that you type in. And then you'd have a super secure password that for your PGP decryption that would require both a password and a physical hardware key token to open that. Um, you don't have to do that. That's just an extra cool step that you can do. So anyways, let's go ahead and get this created. And it can take a little bit depending on how fast your computer is and then you should see your new key so what you'll see is you'll have a uh, display keys it'll show your keys there um, usually it'll send you an email I think to verify your key if you upload it and if you go verify it it'll show that so in this case um, sub keys you can also then export your keys if you're going to use it in a different application or to back them up um, so that's highly recommended so if you hit here, you can then click to export your public key, which you can save, or you can click the private key, and then you can save that to a text file or some kind of encrypted storage. Uh, so that's where you would get your public key to send to somebody else. And in this case, now you have your keys. Uh, and there's, It's pretty simple. So what you do now, it's already built in to work with uh, Gmail. So all of these providers are already set up. So if you go onto these sites and you create an email, this will just kind of work out of the box. Now, if you're going to use this on a different site, um, say like an Onion site or a custom webmail or your own exchange server or something like that with Zimbra, you can add a new entry of the host name. So you could put your host name of that domain and it'll automatically detect it. And there's also a way to do that if you're already logged into the webmail. Um, then there's also key servers where you can choose where you want your keys to go to 
and to be uploaded or fetched from to look up your recipients. So basically you have to have a public key and a private key kit pair to be able to encrypt and sign messages to other people. The person that you're sending to also has to have one set up and they can also use mail envelope or whatever they prefer. So if we were going to send a test email here, what we would do is go click compose. Um, I actually have a key set up. So it should hopefully find it. And then what you do is you type in the thing, or you can click this little button. And it should actually find my key, because I believe it's in the repository. Um, so let's see if it actually shows that. Okay, so we're going to just look up this key just to make sure. It should be in this repo. Alright, so in this case you could look up somebody's key that's, you know, published it to Mail Envelope or a different one. This is the key that it's going to be encrypting to, which is for my actual um, admin email on the other email extension. So it should be going to that. What we're going to do is just go ahead and import this key. Oh, I could have done that here. Um, anyways, so we'll just import this here just as an example. And there you go. You can import this key, and then when you want to encrypt to someone, it should automatically detect it and find it. So what we can do is cancel this. We can go back here. And the thing to keep in mind, whatever you type into an encrypted email needs to be in the body of it that's important or insensitive. So uh, anything you put in the subject is not going to be encrypted. So if you put something in the subject that's sensitive information, that's not encrypted, and there's nothing you can really do about that. So please keep that in mind. So if we wanted to encrypt this to my other email address, you can also encrypt files. So if you want to encrypt files and it's an attachment, it'll encrypt it before it attaches it. And this means that you can use this on any service, even if they don't have built-in PGP. So if you want to keep using your Gmail or whatever you use, you can just install this web extension and keep using it with other people. So now you see, once you click that little thing, there's my PGP message with what I typed in, uh, and then if I press send, bam, there it goes. And then if you look at the uh, sent mail, this is what um, Gmail can see, or anybody that's intercepting your email is only going to see this encrypted block of text and the subject line. And in this case, there's really just the subject of test. So that's a really cool way that you can use PGP, and like I said, this can be used in so many different ways besides webmail, any place that has a messaging system. Um, you can add the domain to the mail envelope plugin, and you can you know, reply and read messages in threaded conversations that are all PGP with ease. Way better than sitting there and copying and pasting it into GPA for when and then doing a decryption. I mean, that's definitely secure, and this is secure too, but that's a lot more work. If you're trying to, you know, expedite your efficiency and also be secure, Mail Envelope is very on top of their stuff, and I highly recommend them. Uh, and if you're going to receive a message, you can go here, type in your your passphrase, which I hope I remember. Okay, they did, and then it displays it. So all of this is done transparently without Gmail being able to see your keys. All of your keys are stored locally in your browser. It's not on a third-party machine where it can be intercepted or stolen. I mean, obviously, your browser security should be on top of things, but that's just something that, you know, you have to keep in mind. If you want more security, then you're going to want to do your encryption of your email inside of uh, GPA for Win or equivalent kind of situation, depending on if you're on Windows or Ubuntu, etc. So that's just a quick demonstration of how you would decrypt, how you message people with mail envelope. Once again, there's so many possible uses for this. It's really handy. And it works with any email or pretty much any website that you want to send messages through. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Follow us for more awesome tutorials.